Morning ladies and gentlemen, Birdo Worry here. Hope you guys are doing well. So how is your day so far? How is your day? I don't know about your neighborhood, but my neighborhood, it is warm already. And it's also beautiful. It is beautiful. The birds are singing as you can hear and the squirrels are having fun. So I don't know about you in your neck of the woods, but it's a beautiful day to give praise and honor and glory to God. So did you take time out to study? Did you, did you, did you take time out to study? Remember, we must study the word. And we know it is late, we is late. The clock is ticking and it's almost midnight. And we know that the solution is Jesus Christ. And he stated, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us bow for prayer. The kind of gracious and Father, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, that you have given me another day to get my life in order. Father, Father God, I ask you right now that you will decrease me so that you'll be increased is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, scripture reading is coming from 1 John, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1. And it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. I tell you, it's nothing like a little bit of breeze to cool you off. I tell you, God is so good. He is so merciful, I tell you. A little breeze and the right moment. So we are going to, into God has not changed. Mm, some people believe that God has changed. That I can do whatever I want to do and still make it in. Well, this is God has not changed. God's character has not changed. He is the same jealous God today as when he gave his laws upon Sinai and wrote it with his own finger on the tables of stone. Those who trample upon God's holy law may say, I am sanctified, but to be indeed sanctified and to claim sanctification are two different things. The New Testament has not changed the law of God. The sacredness of the Sabbath of the fourth commandment is as firmly established as the throne of Jehovah. John writes, Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Let me repeat that. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth transgressed the law. Ha, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Whosoever sinneth transgresses the law has not seen him, neither know him. And you can find this in 1 John 3 verses 4 through 6. We are authorized to hold the same estimation as did the beloved disciples, those who claim to abide in Christ, to be sanctified while living in transgression of God's law. He met with just such a class as we have to meet. He said, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous he that committed sin is of the devil hey david how are you thank you so much for stopping by i hope you are doing well my my brother hope you are doing well it says he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning and then so you could find this in uh, first john 3 verses 7 and 8. here the apostles speak in plain terms as he deemed the subject demanded. The epistle of John, meaning the letters of John, breathes a spirit of love. But when he comes in contact with that class who break the law of God and yet claim that they are living without sin, he does not hesitate to warn them of their fearful, fearful deceptions. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not and do not the truth. But if we walk in light as he is in the light, 
we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sins if we say that we have no sins we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us and you can find this in first john uh, chapter 1 verses 6 through 10. so that concludes my topic today god has not changed my brother my sister he has not changed so on tomorrow we're going to go ahead and do a review of the ministry of john what we have covered uh, in the past week we're going to go ahead and do a review of that tomorrow so may i share with you my devotion may i share with you my devotion this is the same author of the sanctified life it's the same author it's the same author same person and this is our high calling it says it's an old it's an old book i had this forever and ever and ever if you see pages are all torn yep 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 but the, the word the uh, information in here is I tell you it's a blessing it's a blessing so he says habits and character building enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of the evil man and you can find this in Proverbs 4 uh, 14 few realize the power of habits inspiration asks can the ET open change his skin or the leopard his spots and added then may he also do good that are accustomed to do evil Jeremiah 13 23 this is a solemn assertion but there is a comfort and courage in the reflection in that if evil habits acquire such force that it seems almost impossible to turn in the right direction the power of good habits is equally strong the results of each day's work, whether the tendency to be to, let me go back. The result of each day's work, whether the tendency be to elevate us in the scale of moral worth or to push us downward towards perdition and influenced by the days that have preceded it, defeat today prepares the way for still greater defeat tomorrow let me repeat that defeat today prepared the way for still greater defeat tomorrow victory today ensure an easier victory tomorrow then how careful we should be to seek that the habits and characters we are forming are correct and virtuous young friends restrain your feet from all evil ways men may discipline themselves to do right like daniel they may have a heaven-born purpose in their heart that they will not defile soul or body notwithstanding the degenerate degenerate no uh nicole notwithstanding the corruptions of the age God gave Daniel knowledge and skills in all learning and wisdom. And you can find this in Daniel 1.17. His blessing attended the man who put forth human effort in accordance with the divine will. The same will help still, the same help will still be given to all who pursue a similar cur cur course, course, course. The same help will still be given to those who pursue a similar course and with the glory of God in view, practice and abstinence and self-restraint. The same differences will be seen between them and the self-indolence in, uh, that they was between Daniel and his fellow and other youths in the king's court. There will be the clear eyes and complexion a form tread, a strength and vigor of intellect, and a neat perceptions of spiritual truth. Let us remember that character is not the result of accident. Let me repeat that. Let us remember that character is not a result of accident, but day by day it is forming for good or for evil. Great importance attacks to this work of character building. 
for it is far reaching in its results. We are builders for time. Let me repeat that. We are builders for time and for eternity. We are builders for time and for eternity. So that concludes my devotion, Habits and Character Building. Mm. Let me share with, may I share with you my hymn? I need to drink some water. Okay, here's my hymn. My faith had found a resting place. Uh, my faith has found a resting place. My faith has found a resting place. Not in a man-made creed. I trust the ever-living one that he for me will plead. I need no other evidence. I need no other plead. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Enough for me that Jesus save this end my fears and doubt. A sinful soul, I come to him. He will not cast me out. I need no other evidence. I need no other plead. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. My soul is resting on the word, the living word of God. Salvation is my Savior's name, salvation through his blood. I need no other evidence. I need no other plead. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Here's the last verse. The great physicians heal the sick. I tell you, somebody in the house today that needs healing, the great physician heals the sick. The loss he came to save. For me, his precious blood he shed. For me, his life he gave. I need no other evidence. I need no other plead. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Isn't that beautiful? My faith has found a resting place. I hope you have found a resting place, my sister, my brother, and it's in the arm of Jesus Christ. I hope that you have made your calling and election sure and make sure that you are on the winning team. Remember, there's two forces in this world, either on God's side or you're on Satan's side, and you cannot be sitting and, oh, I have not made a decision. You have to make a decision. God has given us this mind, and he doesn't want us to, how would you say, uh, get our minds perverted by what we are eating, what we are drinking, and that's why uh, I keep on stating it's time for God's children children of the kingdom to get off eating meat get off of meat eating all together my sister my brother because what it's doing is putting disease in your body and it's also perverting your mind from really concentrating because if uh if wickedness is increasing in the in the humans in the in this world you know that disease is increasing in the animal kingdom so it's 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 best for us my sister my brother remember there would be no killing in heaven so why can't we just start it today there should be no animal be killed in order for me to survive so we need to make sure my sister and brother that we are eating we are drinking and to the glory of God and because I have prayed over a dead animal it does not mean that I'm not going to get the disease of that animal remember back in the day how was the animal killed the animal has to be without spot it had to be there was a way you had to kill the animal and after you kill the animal you had to drain the blood and cut out the fat so how is the animal killed today come on how is the animal killing today so we are eating we are not we are eating people not we not we not me i'm not in there so you might be eating the the, the blood and the fat in the meat my sister my brother and that was never god's intention you you could go back and study read Leviticus he has specific instruction if you were eating meat what it had what you had to do with that and I tell you if you do all that drain the blood and cut out the fat my sister and brother you would not even want that because it'll be so tough it'll be so hard come on now and besides why, why can't we go to get the how would you say the nourishment firsthand okay so they the cow or whatever animal eat the grass or whatever why can't we just go to the grass and eat the grass eat the herbs right <laughs> instead of getting it second hand so my sister my brother so whatever if that is one of your how would you say one of your shortcomings just give it to the lord and ask him to guide you ask him for direction 
ask him for direction okay so ask him okay so everything my sister and brother you got to go to the lord and pray about it fast and pray like you have never prayed before because god is getting ready to come jesus is coming back soon and we as individuals need to be prepared ourselves so we can so we won't be deceived by all the different uh, devices all the different things that's going on so with that, my sister and brother, let us bow for prayer. The kind of gracious and Father, I thank you for the wind that is blowing, Father God. I thank you, thank you that you're cooling off the valley. I thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you, Father God, for not leaving me here by myself, Father God. I thank you that you have given me another opportunity. You have given my friends another opportunity to get our life in order. So, Father, we give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. If I have said or if we have done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father, I ask you that you would just wash us and make us uh, whiter than snow, Father. We thank you. We thank you for Jesus that died on Calvary's cross. We thank you, Father, that you sit high and you look low and you know what each one of us need right now. And we thank you, Father God, for providing it right now. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Okay, my sister and brother. So if you have found any uh, value in this, you do not like, do not share, do not make a comment, do not follow me on YouTube. Do not, do not, do not. Until tomorrow, my sister and brother, I thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. I love you. So tomorrow, until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.